In the previous video we looked at pattern construction. Now I'd like to take a look at song mode and see how these patterns can be chained together to create a complete song. Now the patterns are arranged vertically and if we click on one of these patterns it will be queued until the current pattern finishes playing. Now it's incredibly important to make sure the pattern starts to play before you add it to the song chain. Now a song can be anything up to 199 blocks. The idea is you select a block, select a position in the song chain and click the add button. You can do this with or without the sequencer running. Now if I attempt to insert a block into the song chain and that block in the song chain is not empty, we'll get the uh, overwrite and insert prompts. If we insert, the whole song will be shifted up to make room for the new pattern. Pressing the chain button begins playback of the song chain. Playback begins from the selected block. As you can see, we've now moved on to block two. And as the cursor hits the end of the screen, it should move on to block three. Now let's take this a stage further. Supposing we didn't want to bring all of pattern one in at once. We can press and hold the record button and select those layers of pattern one we do want to hear. Select the position in the song chain and press the add button. Now let's bring in the drums and add that to the next position in the song chain. We can even add transpose box to the chain. Right, now you can preview this by selecting block eight and pressing the chain button. Now in this example, we added three layers from pattern one to the song chain. But we could quite easily have added layers from different patterns, so long as all those patterns are in the same key. OK, I want to look at recording samples. Aurora has four different instrument types, one of which is the sampler. Now the sampler allows you to import WAV files or record samples from the internal microphone. Once you've recorded a sound, you could use the ADSR, VCO and LFO settings to manipulate the sound even further. The sampler imports loop points from WAV files, but you can use the loop point editor to manipulate the loop points for your own recording material. So let's record a sample. Now, we simply set the trigger level, set the size of the record buffer, press the record button, then play a note on our instrument. Press the preview button to hear the recording. As you can see, it was cut off quite abruptly, but we can use the fade out to fix this. Great. We can even normalize the sample so that all samples are the same volume. OK, the next thing I want to move on to is automation. Automation allows you to store real-time parameter changes along with the pattern. Now to demonstrate this, I've loaded in a simple drum beat and I'm going to switch to automation mode. Now this drop-down list allows you to select the parameter you wish to automate. In this case, pan. And up and down is volume. Now let's take a look at cutoff and resonance. So how do I record this to a pattern? Easy. Simply press the record button and while the pattern's playing, drag the pen over the grid. Releasing as the pattern ends. This automation will now play back along with the layer. Right, let's take a look at audio effects. OK, layer 11 currently has strings, so let's find something a little bit more appropriate. OK, we have a nice dry sound, so let's go and add some delay. To do this, select the effects setup mode. You can configure up to three effects. Press the set button and select an effect from the list. You can alter the effect parameters using the grid and the drop down list. 
The three rotary knobs at the bottom of the screen control effect return levels. Now if we bring up layer properties, we can now set the delay level. Great. Now in the first video, I briefly looked at XY mode. It's such a powerful tool that I think we should take a second look. In the Param drop-down list, we have various elements which we can manipulate. In this case, let's take a look at filter. Notice the round circle on layer 1, and the position of the triangle, which tells us that the right of the grid is controlling the filter. Selecting volume indicates that there's some volume changes on layer 3. In fact, the position of the triangle tells us that there's volume changes to the left of the grid for layer 3. In this case, dragging to the left of the grid increased the volume on layer 3. Now if we take a look at FX Send 1, we can see that layer 3 is being controlled as we move to the left of the grid. And layer 1 is controlled when we move to the top of the grid. The colour coding should make that obvious. So as we move up, we hear the echo on the drums. Now as we move down, we're bringing in FX2 on the drums, which happens to be a reverb. So it's quite a powerful tool, this, which affects all layers. Now finally I'd like to look at some of the other instruments, starting with the drums. Now drum kit consists of up to 12 samples and each one is assigned a musical note on the piano keyboard. As with the sampler you can record your own sounds from the inbuilt microphone and there's even a filter section too. Okay, now let's take a look at the synthesizer. Now I would like to point out that in basic mode a lot of this complexity is hidden from the user and you can easily get by using existing patches. In advanced mode you have full control over instrument editing and patch creation. So to sum up, if you're a musical novice or an experienced musician Aurora has something for you. Try the demo today.